paranoid schizophrenia. It's described as a subtype of schizophrenia which is characterized by predominantly the ironically named positive symptoms of schizophrenia which include delusions and hallucinations. It's the most common form of schizophrenia. Paranoid delusions can cause a person to fear that others are watching them or trying to harm them. Paranoid schizophrenia is a type of psychosis that affects how you think and behave. This essentially means that your mind does not agree with reality. This can show up in different ways and at different times, even in the same person. The illness usually starts in late adolescence or young adulthood. People with paranoid delusions are unreasonably suspicious of others. This can make it hard for them to hold a job, to run errands, to have friendships, and even when going to the doctor. Although it's a lifelong illness, you can take medicines and find help to stop symptoms or to make them easier to live with. Paranoid symptoms include delusions which are fixed beliefs that seem real to you, even when there's strong evidence that they aren't, and paranoid delusions, which are also called delusions of persecution, which reflect profound fear and anxiety along with the loss of ability to tell what's real and what's not real. For example, they might make you feel like a co-worker is trying to hurt you by poisoning your food, your spouse or partner is cheating on you, the government is spying on you, people in your neighbourhood are plotting to harass you, these beliefs can cause trouble in your relationships, and if you think that strangers are going to hurt you, you may feel like staying inside or being alone. People with schizophrenia aren't usually violent, but sometimes paranoid delusions can make them feel threatened. If someone is pushed over the edge, their actions usually focus on family members, not the public, and it happens at home. You could also have related hallucinations in which your senses aren't working right. For example, you may hear voices that make fun of you or insult you, they might also tell you to do harmful things, or you might see things that aren't really there. This is the reality for many people suffering with paranoid schizophrenia, and was the basis of the defence of the person we are about to discuss. Valdo Calocane, who refers to himself as Adam Mendez, was born in Guinea-Bissau on the 4th of September 1991. His family moved to Madeira when he was about three years old, and then to Lisbon in Portugal when he was about eight years old. He and his family came to the UK in 2007, when he was 16 years old. His time at school was described in court as largely uneventful. He chose not to do A-levels, as he didn't think that he could achieve the grades that he desired. He instead got work as a labourer or a cleaner. Callokane later went back into education and did a degree in mechanical engineering at the University of Nottingham. He graduated in June of 2022 when he was aged 30. He had been living in a student flat in Derwent Way in the Lenton area of the city, but Nottinghamshire Police said they had previously engaged with Calicone on a number of occasions between 2020 and 2022, saying this was mostly while supporting our colleagues in the NHS. On the 23rd of May 2020, the court was told that Calicone had gone to A&E believing that he was having a heart attack. He then went home and tried to get into another apartment in his building by breaking down the door. He was arrested for criminal damage and assessed by psychiatric services while in custody. They concluded he was psychotic, but that the risk to others was low and that he should be referred to a crisis team for review at home. He was released without charge, but an hour later he knocked down another door in his apartment block. Calocane was arrested for criminal damage a second time, reassessed and then detained under the Mental Health Act. He was admitted to psychiatric services at Highbury Hospital on the 25th of May 2020. He would be treated with antipsychotic medication and discharged on 17th of June 2020 to the care of a crisis team and advised to take medication for up to nine months. The following month, the court heard that he forced his way into a third flat in the apartment block that he was living in and he was readmitted to Highbury Hospital. His medication was increased and he was managed in the community after this. Calocane admitted to medics during a home visit in August of 2021 that he had stopped taking his medication. After this, he evaded contact with the community mental health team. He was charged with assaulting a police officer but failed to turn up to court. As a result, police had further contact with him when a warrant was secured to gain entry to his home and detain him under the Mental Health Act. This was executed on the 3rd of September 2021, but he assaulted a police officer while he was being transported to Highbury Hospital. 
He was admitted to an inpatient services, but then allowed to return to his flat until mid-January 2022, when the prosecution said he was involved in an altercation with a flatmate. Following two further assessments under the Mental Health Act, he was admitted as an inpatient again on the 27th of January 2022, but then discharged on the 24th of February 2022 to the care of a community team. Kylo Kane was eventually charged with assault by beating of an emergency worker and for previously assaulting the police officer. He was due to appear in Nottingham Magistrates Court on the 22nd of September of 2022, more than a year after the incident, but he failed to turn up at court and a warrant for his arrest was issued. However, he was never arrested and the warrant was still outstanding at the time of the Nottingham attacks. Rob Griffin, Nottingham Police Assistant Chief Constable said, I have personally reviewed this matter and we should have done more to arrest him. However, because of the circumstance prevailing at the time of the alleged assault, in my opinion, it is highly unlikely that he would have received a custodial sentence. Of course, an arrest might have triggered a route back into mental health services, but as we have seen from his previous encounters with those services, it seems unlikely that he would have engaged with this process. In addition to the assault of the police officer and his flatmates, Kylo Kane attacked two colleagues when he briefly worked at Arvato Supply Chain Solutions. The assaults were on 5th of May, four days after he started working there and about six weeks before the Nottingham attacks. The prosecution did not say how serious the attacks were and whether or not they were reported to police. The prosecution also said that Kylo Kane had no previous convictions at the time of the Nottingham attacks. On the 13th of June, 2023, leading up to the attacks, Valdo Kylo Kane would travel from London to Nottingham by railway. He would walk around for several hours on the streets of Nottingham. Barnaby Webber and Grace O'Malley Kumar, both aged 19, were walking home together after a night out to celebrate the end of their exams. Sadly, these would be their last moments captured alive on CCTV. The two students, both aged 19, were just 200 metres away from their intended destination when they were attacked and brutally killed. The attack took place on Ilkeston Road just after 4am by Valdo Kalakane, who had repeatedly stabbed them to death with a dagger. Witness evidence read to Nottingham Crown Court described awful blood-curdling scream as Kalokane, dressed in all black, inflicted at least 10 stab wounds on Barnaby and then 23 separate dagger wounds on Grace. As Kalokane stabbed Barnaby, inflicting fatal injuries which caused him to fall to the floor, Grace, demonstrating incredible bravery, sought to protect her friend and fight off the killer, pushing him away into the road. Kylo Kane quickly turned his attention to her. The two fought for over 30 seconds, during which time Kylo Kane stabbed her repeatedly. He was as uncompromisingly brutal in his assault of Grace as he was in his assault of Barnaby. Kylo Kane then walked to the south side of the road where Barnaby was now lying on the ground. Grace, again, tried to walk towards them, but her injuries were too severe and she collapsed. As Kylo Kane continued his attack of Barnaby, Barnaby tried to defend himself, kicking from the ground at Kylo Kane. Kylo Kane would then calmly walk away. Kylo Kane then walked slowly through the Radford area to Mapperley Park, bringing his brother at 4.52am to say, this will be the last time I speak to you. Take the family out of the country. When asked if he was going to do something stupid, Kylo Kane told his brother, it's already done. At 5.04am, a camera on a residential hostel captured him trying to gain entry through a ground floor window. He was fought off and would make his way towards a white van. Just six minutes later, at 10 past 5am, Ian Coates was driving his white Vauxhall Vivaro van on Magdala Road and was heading towards Kylo Kane. His van came into the view of the CCTV coverage at about the same time that Kylo Kane was trying to smash his way into the house. It seems that Ian Coates brought his vehicle to a halt within a few hundred yards of Seelyhurst House and he was then attacked. He too was stabbed repeatedly. A witness in another vehicle saw Kylo Kane stabbing Ian Coates multiple times. CCTV timed at 5.14 captured the sounds of the killing. Mr Coates suffered 15 separate stab wounds, including defensive wounds, to his hands and he was later declared dead at the scene. A pathologist later concluded the wounds had been inflicted at the severe end of the scale. 
CCTV also shows Kalo Kane swerving to hit Mr. Burkett from behind in Milton Street at 5.23am and driving onto a pedestrian island in Upper Parliament Street to mow down two other pedestrians seven minutes later. He was driving the van that he stole from Ian Coates. An eyewitness said that she saw the van being driven into two people at Milton Street. She said she saw the driver look in his mirror and see a police car behind him. At that point, he quickened up before going straight into them, she said. The woman went on the curb and the man went up in the air, she said. It was such a bang, I wish I never saw it. I went over, perhaps I shouldn't have gone over, but I wanted to see if I could help. Officers in a marked police vehicle would pursue the van and eventually the vehicle would be stopped as it was boxed in. Calocaine produced a knife but two officers deployed their tasers which caused Calocaine to drop the weapon into the van's footwell. He was then arrested at 5.35am, more than 90 minutes after the first killings. During the Crown's opening of the case, the prosecution said Calocaine's hands and clothing were bloodstained. A rucksack was recovered. Calocaine was taken to Nottingham Custody Suite off of Radford Road, where his detention was authorised. Calocaine was interviewed three times on the 14th of June in 2023, once on the 15th of June in 2023, and then once on the 16th of June in 2023, all in the presence of his solicitor. He would answer no comment to all questions asked. Valdo Calocaine would plead guilty to three counts of manslaughter and three counts of attempted murder at an earlier hearing. As he was sentenced, Vado Calocaine stood with his hands at his side and showed no emotion as he looked towards the sentencing judge. After being told that he could be led away to the cells, Calocaine briefly attempted to sit back down in his seat before one of five people thought to be psychiatric hospital staff motioned him for him to stand up and leave. Wearing glasses, a dark suit and a light blue shirt without a tie, Kalo Kane was also accompanied by a female dock officer as he left the courtroom. There was no audible reaction from anyone sitting in the public gallery or other parts of the court. The judge said, In the unlikely event of you being released, I must consider which regime will provide the greatest protection for the public. If you went to prison, you would present a real danger to prison officers and other prisoners alike, and I am satisfied that the appropriate disposal is a hospital order. Mr Justice Turner said, Your assessment at Ashworth High Security Hospital says you still believe the voices in your head are real. You were and remain dangerous. All of the evidence before me leads me to a hospital order. If it were not for your mental illness, you would not have committed these appalling crimes. The judge said, A fourth consultant psychiatrist involved in the case agreed with previous experts who all assessed Calocaine and all concluded his mental illness of paranoid schizophrenia. He said, he says he knew what he was doing and he knew he was committing crimes, but the basis for the behavior is very likely to be psychosis in the forms of hallucinations or delusional belief. Mr. Justice Turner said, your mental health state does not detract from the horror of your actions and the destructive impact it has had. This case would go on for three days in court but ultimately, a shocking decision would be made by CPS. In a controversial turn of events, prosecutors would accept his pleas of not guilty to murder and guilty to manslaughter at a hearing in Nottingham Crown Court on Tuesday on the grounds of diminished responsibility due to serious mental illness. The sentence of Valdo Calacane is set to be reviewed by the Attorney General after families of his victims criticised the Crown Prosecution Service. The sentence was carried out on the 25th of January and already by the end of the day the Attorney General is looking to review the sentencing. Families of the three victims, Barnaby Webber, Grace O'Malley Kumar and Ian Coates say they were railroaded into accepting a manslaughter plea by the CPS. Speaking from the steps of the court following the sentencing, Barnaby's mother, Emma Webber, said the claims that the families were consulted were untrue. A complaint that the sentence was too lenient has since been made. Ms Prentice, the Attorney General, will consider the complaint before deciding whether to refer the case to a court of appeal for judges to decide whether the sentence is appropriate. Mrs Webber said, At no point during the previous five and a half months were we given any indication that this could conclude in anything other than murder. We trusted in our system, foolishly as it turns out. 
we do not dispute that the murderer is mentally unwell and has been for a number of years. However, the premeditated planning, the collection of lethal weapons, hiding in the shadows and the brutality of the attacks are of an individual who knew exactly what he was doing, knew entirely that it was wrong, but he did it anyway. Grace O'Malley Kumar's father, Dr. Sanjoy Kumar, was also critical of the CPS. He said, whilst we have never questioned this man's diagnosis, the lack of toxicology, contemporaneous mental health assessment, as well as missed opportunities to divert his lethal path will forever play on our minds, and this requires further review. We will look for answers regarding missed opportunities to intervene and prevent this horrendous crime. Ian Coates's son, James, also spoke outside of Nottingham Crown Court. He said, The letter of the law was once considered the most important law to live and abide by, put upon us to make the country a fair and safer place. Now they are just a cautionary tale where the calculated, cold, brutal killing spree can be reduced down to something that falls within the same sentencing guidelines as that of a death by dangerous driving. He added, the failures of the police, the CPS and the health service have resulted in the murder of my father and these two innocent students. The NHS Mental Health Trust has to be held accountable for their failures along with the police. All we can do is hope that in due course some sort of justice will be served. This man has made a mockery of the system and he has got away with murder. Speaking earlier, a Crown Prosecution Services spokesperson said, Our thoughts and sympathies are with the families of the victims at this incredibly difficult time. Engagement with those who have been left bereaved is one of our highest priorities and in all cases we continue to liaise with the victims' families throughout the legal process. In shocking news today, it has been noted that the Nottingham killer could become eligible for release after three years under the terms of the hospital order imposed by the judge. By law, offenders are entitled to a review of their mental health every three years where they could become eligible for release if doctors assess that they have recovered and are sound of mind. Callocane is subject to a Section 41 order which gives the Justice Secretary or a first-tier tribunal the power to block his release on the grounds that he is assessed to still be a risk to the public. However, the judge did not impose a Section 45A order which would have meant that even if Callocane was judged safe to be released, he would only be allowed to serve the rest of his sentence in jail rather than in the community. Legal experts suggested that one option would be to impose a Section 45A so that Callocane would be required to serve his sentence in prison if he was to recover from his mental health. The judge decided against the 45A order on the basis that the current prognosis is that Callocane is unlikely to recover sufficiently to be released and is likely to spend the rest of his life in a secure hospital. The district attorney has 28 days to decide whether to refer the case to the Court of Appeal to figure out whether the sentence was appropriate and should be increased. This is the brutal case of Valdo Callocane, in which he would brutally kill three innocent people and go on to attempt to kill three more within just a couple of hours. This is a tough one to digest. On the one hand, yes, the man was clearly failed by the institutions consistently, but how can that excuse such brutal and horrific crimes? I gave an explanation at the beginning of this video to what paranoid schizophrenia is and how it can affect a person, yet I still cannot see how this could possibly be manslaughter. In the callous and savage way that these people were attacked, with such a lack of regard for human life and a clear bloodlust, it's truly hard to comprehend that this was not the work of a demon. Valdo Calacain may never see the outside world again, but tragically, he has ended three lives of innocent people who were cherished and loved. Nothing can change that. I want to take a quick second to say, if you're suffering with mental health issues, please reach out to somebody. There are a lot of charities and mental health organisations out there who may be able to help you through what you are going through. Please comment with your thoughts on this case and what punishment you think is fitting for these crimes. Also, please leave any suggestions for future videos. Rest in peace to Barnaby Webber, Grace O'Malley Kumar and Ian Coates.